So back from EGX this week, which was another excellent show. Uh, it won't surprise you to learn that the Star Wars gameplay experiences on offer had some of the longest queues every single day from the moment the doors opened until they closed each day. Happily, I was able to get access to try out the games on offer several times to get a real feel for them. Now, an important caveat to note right here is that the gameplay still is essentially beta. So as we know, things can change. Maybe there won't be quite so many battle pickups dotted around and so on. Overall, though, I think it felt to me a fairly good representation of what we can expect from the game. I also have to apologise for having to use some of the same tired b-roll footage but as of right now we have no captured content until the actual beta. Um, it will also surprise you that I actually really enjoyed the Battlefront experience. Let me break that down for you and explain why this is. Also before we get into the missions, let's talk about two things, weapons and team play. Most of the weapons in Battlefront have reference names such as the DLT-19 Heavy Blaster, the A295 Blaster Rifle. Essentially though, all you really need to know is that the guns are typical, in that some have a faster fire rate but, you know, lighter damage, some are slower with higher damage, and then the other things all in between. It's all fairly straightforward stuff. When it comes to accuracy and handling, I would say, what handling? <laughs> Recoil is not a really a thing uh, when it comes to Battlefront, making them extremely user-friendly weapons, no matter what your skill level or experience. Um, also, these are not guns that you have to learn, essentially. Um, also, hip fire third person or first person ADS makes really no difference to your accuracy. If you want to just run around hip firing, uh, you know, the fully automatic LMG style blaster gun, that's going to work for you as well as the standard blaster. But they do have limitations in terms of how they are used. Obviously, one is going to be slightly better at range than the other. And when it comes to range, the standard blaster and rifle blaster seem pretty decent, far more so uh, than in previous games. This is a curious choice because in earlier Battlefront iterations, the drop off in power was quite significant. Uh, this meant it would push you to make more sort of full on attacks rather than sniping. Um, but within the sessions I played, I was able to sit back and, and pick off people to a reasonable degree. But with that said, don't be confused. These are not sniper rifles, uh, they are far less accurate. And whilst you can get some kills at range and maybe pick up some assist kills and things like that, I'm talking about three to 400 meters, uh, you're far, far more effective in that 100 meter range bracket. Also, I really didn't notice anyone sitting back trying to grab kills and where people were doing this, they were usually just focusing on choke points around an objective, which made very much sense as this was the mission that we were taking part on. When it comes to gadgets, you have things like the personal force fields, uh, a 3GL style grenade launcher, jump pack and some various other bits and bobs. These are all pretty useful in specific situations, none of them felt especially overpowered and they certainly added to your options when approaching a situation. Uh, I think certainly without the gadgets, the gameplay would have become quite tedious fairly quickly, so they do a good job of throwing variety in and keeping your actions interesting. All in all, the guns felt actually pretty balanced uh, within the context of the situation. The lack of reload with the guns didn't really become a huge issue. When that overheat is coming up, it's essentially the same thing. You need to slow down, sit back. So providing it actually you know, it approaches the attitude in which you play, the way you have to think about attacking a position, because you can't just go in firing full on. Uh, you have to maybe sort of delay that stagger the way that you attack. Battlefront, it's not your standard military shooter, and it's not meant to be. Uh, I found I was able to play quite carefully, cover to cover, or aggressively. Using my jump pack, I could fly over people, flip 180 in the process, and then pick up a nice triple or quad from the unaware guys who are sitting behind a rock or a turret that I landed right behind and just wiped them out. Team play in the game, uh, it was actually pretty decent, considering it was a random assortment of public players who had never actually played the game before. But maybe... Just maybe it had something to do with the fact that before playing, you had to sit down and be given a scripted mission briefing by Admiral Akbar. At the show, they basically had a setup where you would watch a movie on a big screen before playing the game. Everyone had to go through the process, and it showed Akbar explaining some key points about the Hoth assault. From start to finish, it emphasised team play and how important it was to cooperate and work together and complete key tasks. It also explained about the mounted guns available and what was required to take down the ATAT ground AC-130s. It then finished off by restating that only by working together could victory be achieved. 
Unsurprisingly, I thought this was absolutely excellent, and it seemed to have a genuine impact on how the sessions played, not just from my actual gameplay, but also by watching others playing throughout the day. You could see people were really trying hard to focus on this objective stuff, and having some kind of reminder about what it is you're supposed to be doing is something I've been saying for the longest time. A mandatory tutorial you have to complete before starting multiplayer modes, plus on top reminders between rounds. This stuff should have been in Battlefield games long ago, and maybe the penny has finally dropped and we're going to see more of this in Battlefront. In terms of what you actually need to do as a team, the onus is very much on the Rebels. If you are playing as Imperial, your mission is pretty straightforward kill everything and take out priority targets such as the anti-vehicle turrets, the Y-wing speeders in the air. For the Rebels, it actually requires, I would say, an optimistic level of team play. To take out the at, -AT they first need to be weakened up by Y-wings, making them more vulnerable to attack. Uh, they also need speeders to wrap the cables around and bring them down. All the while, the ground forces need to continue holding back the Imperial forces at designated relay points. This plays out very much like Rush. Um, in summary though, from a team play point of view, uh, a huge amount is required from the Rebels. Um, the Imperial task is far simpler by quite a wide margin. The only way you're going to ever see the Rebels win this one is if they work together. Will that happen? It's FPS in 2015. You can be the judge of that. Um, gameplay, what was on offer? Well, we had two experiences available to us. The Walker Assault on Hoth and the Survival Mission on Tatooine. Um, both of these were showcased on the PS4 platform. Let's talk about the survival mission. Me and Fuse, who you know from my regular squad, uh, played as cop to secure drop pods in some Tatooine canyons. You were playing as rebel forces and we had the standard range of weapons available to us. Survival plays out much as you would expect. You have to complete some simple tasks while repelling waves of enemy soldiers. Uh, this mode, whilst fun, we got the measure of it in about a minute. One nice aspect with this was that the Imperial forces would approach you from different directions and sometimes surprise you from behind. They do split up and attack you from different places as well as taking cover, but generally they aren't hugely smart. As with most wave-based survival missions, you ultimately end up failing by being overwhelmed rather than outsmarted by the AI. Periodically, the Imperial forces do have an ATST join them, uh, which you can take out using your various weapons and gadgets. They aren't invincible, so providing you have some decent cover, you should be just fine. If you die, you can respawn using your Zelda-style heart. Um, if you can find them, you can also pick up extra hearts on the route. These are shared between you and your partner, so if you respawn, you collectively lose a heart. Honestly, the co-op is fairly as you would expect. It was fun working with a friend, but I really didn't feel under pressure or on the edge of my seat. It was some Star Wars blasting action, but not much more than that. So on to the main event, Hoth Assault. I don't think I really need to explain to you the mission on this one, but for anybody that was born yesterday, Imperial at, -AT walkers are approaching a rebel shield generator. As the rebels, you must stop them at all costs. Simple, right? No. You have to fight off endless attacking Imperial soldiers whilst worrying about TIE fighters flying strafing runs on you, ATSTs marching across the battlefield firing their range of weapons on you, oh and of course not forgetting the giant ATATs themselves. Think AC-130 with everything except the 20mm Vulcan cannons which have been nicely changed out for a balanced orbital strike. Enjoy. So, as the Rebels, the task facing you is daunting, but is it really? Yes. Yes, it is. Imagine playing Rush while the enemy have two times as much armour as you. Uh, it really sucks to be the Rebels on this day. So, it must be a miserable nightmare, right? Just a rollover. Actually, no. Weirdly, despite on paper sounding like game over from the Rebels from the start, you actually can find it fairly copable, which is weird. Uh, the relay point objectives mean that you have time to hold off the Imperials to an extent. The ground turrets for the Rebels can only be taken out with battle pickup launchers or by the ATAT. Also, perhaps TIE fighters if they can get a missile down. So, again, these provide some decent firepower uh, and also safe firepower, providing that you have a sensible gunner. Also, the biggest battle comes down to really air pilots, the Y Wings and the Speeders uh, versus the TIE Fighters. If you have some good pilots, it's going to make a world of difference. And for the missions I played, the Rebels did actually manage to take down at least one of the AT ATATs multiple times. Uh, when we were attacking, we managed this as well. So it's, it's not an impossible task. With that said, did I see the Rebels win a game? 
personally, no. They were rolled over every time. But I think this is largely down to the fact that people only had just got to grips with the game for the first time. I think with some practice and knowledge on how to handle the situation, it's going to be definitely possible and more, you know, varied. Still though, make no mistake, it's a hard mission and your team is going to be largely responsible for how the round goes down. If you think that one or two or even four or five players are going to turn the tide of battle on this one, think again. This mode is the definition of team play. If you aren't working together, it's going to be game over every single time. No amount of guys sitting with 40 to 4 kills at the top of the board is going to change that. Uh, I should know because that was me on my Rebel Defense round. I was doing everything I could to turn it back using the mounted turrets. I was jump packing over people and then taking them out unaware, landing behind them, uh, using the mounted cannon to take down the ATST walkers. Uh, and for sure, some of my team were playing very well, but overall, as a group, we still just got wiped out as our flanks fractured. Uh, the air support did little to assist us. By contrast, uh, when I played as the Imperials, my experience was very different. I managed to chain up three ATAT pickups in a row. Uh, this meant I was able to lay down a horrific amount of fire on the enemy. Uh, I used, took out so many turrets, I was orbital striking positions where I could see uh, the rebels had clustered on ridgelines that they were defending. It was honestly a slaughter. Uh, in between this, I was able to pick up the ATSC and again lay down a significant amount of fire. But the rebels were able to take me out in fairly quick succession when I was in the ATST. Uh, it felt not unlike being an attack helicopter in Battlefield 4. Yes, you've got the firepower, but everyone is aiming for you the moment you're spotted and you just don't have the speed to get out of the way. So overall, I, I hugely enjoyed my experience with the game. I came out of it thinking like, wow, this was you know better than I thought it was going to be. But still, within its context. And that's an important note to make because let's put this on the table. This is not a serious tactical shooter. I'm sure that's going to be a shock to many of you. <laughs> this game is designed to be several things. Fun, casual and console friendly. I don't want to make too many sweeping statements before the game is out because it's really not that far away. Uh, I think also there's no mystery here. Everybody knows what Battlefront is going to be and that is the most important thing here. Um, yes, some things have changed since previous Battlefront games, but hey, veteran players, you think you're the only ones who are frustrated that your treasured series has changed? Join the back of the line. Uh, there is one mode we haven't seen as well, which will appear in the beta, uh, Drop Zone on Solust. Um, here you're going to be required to fight to control drop pods in 8v8 matches. I'm thinking this is going to play out something along the lines of Domination. If you're looking for Star Wars Battlefield, this isn't it. It was never meant to be that, DICE said this themselves. Battlefront is a pretty fast-paced arcade action shooter in the Star Wars universe. I, for one, am trying to put aside my overly convoluted opinions about public gameplay just to try and enjoy the game for what it is. And, you know, with that in mind, let the third-person hipfire commence. The beta is out October 8th. Be sure to join me then for some Star Wars livestream action and much more content to come on the game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop me a rating. It helps my channel and me out so much. Uh, tell me what you think about the fight between the Rebel Defenders and the Imperial Attackers on Hoth.